Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In this Tips and Tricks, I will review the Showcase Native Revit File Workflow. For an efficient workflow between Revit and Showcase, you can import native Revit file directly into Showcase. In Revit, you have access to multiple 3D views that were set up for this project. A specific visualization view was created from which the visibility graphic was managed to create a light version for visualization. It is important to send only what you need for the visualization to Showcase in order to keep a light file. The scene will then be saved to make sure that it is upgraded to Revit 2014 before importing it into Showcase. Once in Showcase, use the Task UI to open the Revit file and browse directly to the Revit project. Before opening, click on the settings to choose a Revit view. From the import settings, you can choose to show the import status while importing and under the geometry, choose a view from the list of Revit views that you have created in your project. Considering the amount of views that we have in Revit, it might take a few seconds to load all the view. Now that you have access to all the Revit views, you can navigate to the visualization view that was specifically created for the showcase project. You can choose to create shot upon imports, and change the environment background upon loading the scene. We will leave it to the BP gradient for now and click open. The file will be imported directly into Showcase and you'll get to witness the import status as it's happening. Once the converting is over, you'll have access to the scene directly in Showcase. From the import status menu, you can see the conversion of the RVT file. Because we have chosen a Revit view, the Revit view was imported in the Showcase scene. You can access the Revit view by pressing T on your keyboard to open the shot menu while the view will be displayed. You have access to the Revit view that was imported as well as the view that was created upon loading the scene, which was chosen by us. Notice also that the background is using the BP gradient that we have chosen within the import menu. You can change the background at any time. Let's slow the Stuttgart background for now. Because the scene is quite big, the background is too small for the scene and you'll need to adjust the properties to fit your scene. This can be easily done by right-clicking and asking the properties of this environment and change the size of this environment. You can crank it up to 20 units, which will be more appropriate for this project. It is a good idea to go back to the view from which you can see the background effect and make sure that this background works for your shots. Notice that we now have a flickering effect when we're looking at the tracked left view. This can easily be fixed under the File Settings menu, Scene Settings. This is happening because this object is quite large and the distance from the camera near clipping plane is too small for this project. By increasing the centimeter amount for the clipping plane, I have fixed this flickering artifacts. Going back to the 3D view, I can now adjust the properties of my background by perhaps rotating it and making sure that the environment background is interesting for this particular shot. Rotating the background will not affect the lighting. At this point, I'm only rotating the image that is located in the background, but I am not adjusting the lighting. You can always adjust the lighting by going to the task UI and reposition the light to something that is, that is a little bit more interesting for this particular shot. Under the task UI, I click on the adjusting light and I can move and reorient the lights to better suit my needs. I can also readjust the brightness and contrast of the scene. Now I have a nice lighting effect in my shot and I'm ready to create a ray trace image which will give me better quality lighting and reflections for this shot. I press R on the keyboard, the viewport will turn into ray trace and the ray trace image will start its calculation. Higher quality lighting 
reflection, refraction, and material quality is much nicer under ray tracing. Once the ray tracing has reached a nice level of detail, I can save the shot and I'm ready for my presentation. But the reason why this workflow is so efficient is that because Showcase keeps an active link with the Revit file, the minute you change anything or re-edit the Revit file and save the Revit file, you'll be able to receive these change directly in Showcase. So here I'm going to save this Revit file with the new edits that I've created on my column. And you'll notice that in Showcase, while loading the Import Status menu, I will receive a notification that this Revit file needs update. By clicking on the conversion status, the Revit file will be updated without breaking the link in between these two software. So in conclusion, while using a native Revit file, you're avoiding the extra step of exporting an FBX and resaving an FBX. This workflow becomes really seamless and really efficient between Revit and Showcase.